Hey guys, welcome back to part 3 of this 2019 multiple choice paper. And as always, remember, if this video is for you, please, please, please ensure that you're learning. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and share this video with a friend that that friend can share it with another friend so that we can all be prepared for it. So question 41, what is the interquartile range of the marks scored by the 200 students? And if you remember from part two, this was referring to this graph. So looking at what is the interquartile range. And remember, interquartile range is looking at the, up, the difference between the upper and lower quartiles or the difference between the 75th and 25th percentiles. So in this case, it would be the difference between 150, which would be somewhere up here, to give us 42.5 marks and the difference between 50 which would be somewhere right here to give us 30 so what we're looking at is the difference between 42.5 and 30 as these would be the upper and lower quartiles to give us 12.5 so our answer 441 is a and then 43 is looking at the if 38 percent of the students pass the test what was the pass mark so 38% of 200 is 76, which means that 76 of the students pass. And if 76 of the students pass, we're looking at 200 minus 76 to give us 124 of the students fail. So then if we look at 124 of the students that fail, it would be 124 would be right here. And extrapolating going across, which means that this corresponds with the 40% 40, 40 pass mark, which means that the mark that was required to pass the exam was 40% and therefore answer for 42 is B. 43, the following table shows the frequency of scores obtained by students in a test what is the range of scores so remember range is looking at the difference between the highest and the lowest number or the largest and the smallest number so therefore it would be the difference between 10 and 2 which will give us 8 and therefore answer for 43 is c Question 44 refers to the following two-way table which shows the mode of transportation to school on a particular day for a group of 200 students. And this is the table, so it says, a male is picked at random from the group. What is the probability that he does not walk to school on that day? So probability that a male does not walk to school on that day. So therefore it be this male is taking either a bus or a taxi, which is 50 plus 30 to give us 80 divided by the total amount of males which will be 108 so therefore we can simplify this by saying 4 into 80 goes 20 times so it be equal to 20 so we're just simplifying this fraction and then 4 into 108 goes 27 times so therefore the probability that a male does not walk to school on a particular day is 20 over 27 and therefore answer for 44 is c which of the following best represents the graph of a function and if you remember with the graph of the function if we're doing the vertical test the vertical line should pass through the graph and cut the points on it only once so should we pass a vertical line through this graph we'll see that at any point on the graph it will only be passing through any point only one time so therefore answer for 45 is a but going down look at the others if we pass a vertical line through b at this point it will be passing through two of the points at this point it will also pass in through two of the points so therefore b is definitely not a function same thing for c at this point should we do a vertical line test the vertical line will be passing through four of these points and that cannot be the case and the same thing for d 46 if f of x is equal to 2x minus 2x square minus 1 then f of negative 3 is equal to so remember anywhere that we see x we will replace it with negative 3 so therefore it will be 
f of negative 3 is equal to 2 multiplied by negative 3 squared minus 1 and as we know when you square a negative number it becomes positive so it is 2 multiplied by 9 minus 1 2 9 is 18 minus 1 and 18 minus 1 is 17 so therefore answer for 46 is C 47 is looking at the straight line AB that cuts the Y axis at and remember this point is the Y axis so it is the point A and remember when we're reading coordinates we're reading the point that corresponds to the x-axis first then the point that corresponds with the y-axis so this would be 0 negative 2 so therefore answer for 47 is d 48 the equation of the line which passes through the point 0 5 and as a gradient of 4 is so remember the equation of a straight line is y equal mx plus c where m is the gradient of the question told us that the gradient is 4 so therefore we know that our answer is either a or c but remember we need c which is the y intercept so therefore y c is the answer where y is equal to 4x plus 5 and remember these points are x and y So 49, the range of f of x equal to x cubed for the domain negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2 is. So what we're doing is we're cubing negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And if we do negative 2 cube, it will be negative 2 multiplied by negative 2 multiplied by negative 2. And you will get negative 8 as the answer and we can see that d is the only one that has negative 8 and we can therefore conclude that these are answers but you should do the same with negative 1 negative 1 multiplied by negative 1 multiplied by negative 1 you will get negative 1 0 cube is 0 1 cube is 1 and 2 cube is 8 so answer for 49 is d 50 to 51 refers to the following graph for function the values of x for which y equal 4x minus x square intersects y equal 0 are so that would be 0 and 4 so x is equal to 0 and 4 so where y is equal to 0 which is this line what are the points for x it would be 0 and 4 so our answer for 50 is a 51 is looking at the coordinates of the turning point of the graph y equal 4x minus x square it would be so the turning point so turning point is right here the highest point on the graph it would be 2 and 4 so our answer for 51 is d which is two and four which is the turning point of the graph 52 which of the following pairs of lines is perpendicular and that would definitely be c so perpendicular lines intersect at right angles to one another and to figure out if two equations are perpendicular you take a look at their slopes which is looking basically at their gradient so therefore the slopes of perpendicular lines are opposite reciprocals of each other and their product would be one so therefore should you work out all these equations a b c and d and find their slopes you'll realize that the only one which is opposite and their product is negative one is c and that is how we know that c is or answers this right here is negative four and should we find the slope of this one it would be one over four so you can just work those out and you i told you the answer you get c already which is negative four and one over four so that is it so 53 what transformation maps pqr onto other diagram so it will be a reflection as you can see this is a total flip of this original 
diagram. 54 refers to the following diagram of an isosceles triangle. In the triangle, the value of x is, so remember isosceles, it means that two point on the, in the triangle is equal to, so if this is 30 degrees, this right here is also 30 degrees. So therefore, we already know two points within this triangle, and remember total angle within a triangle is 180 degrees. So therefore, it becomes 180 minus 30 minus 30 degrees and that is equal to 180 minus 60 and therefore the missing angle or x is equal to 120 degrees so answer for 54 is c 55 which of the following best describes the relationship between x and y and that would be x equal y if you've been practicing before we've worked this question multiple times you can check the link in the description below for a more in detailed explanation of why this is so which is x is equal to y so 56 the length on mo in centimeter is we've also worked this question before so basically this new triangle is half of this original triangle so ab is equal to mn and ab six centimeter and this is equal to three centimeter and if you realize the angles within the triangle remain the same of 59 degrees and 31 and ac is seven centimeter and mo would be half of seven centimeter which is 3.5 57 the image of a point one two under translation is negative five negative four what is a translation vector so if you remember the equation that you've always been using is point plus translation equal image but this time we're finding what the translation vector is so therefore it would be point or rather image minus point is equal to translation vector so therefore the image that we have is negative five minus point of one is equal to negative six which is our translation vector for this point and the other point the other image is negative four minus a point of two and that would give us negative six as well and that is our other translation vector and therefore our answer for 57 is a which is negative 6 negative 6 58 so OAA and OBB and OCC are straight lines O OAA O B, B and O C C straight lines. Triangle A B C is mapped. So this triangle is mapped onto this one. What is the scale factor of the enlargement? So as we can see that basically C B was occupying one space, which is now occupying two. AC was 1, 2, and now it's 1, 2, 3, 4. So therefore, basically, we see that the scale, basically, we can see that the scale factor is 2. So this is saying, so this is saying it was half, which is definitely not the case. This is saying it was negative half, which is definitely not the case. But C perfectly describes the scale factor. So therefore, if we multiply each area by 2, we can see that we'll get this new triangle which is the enlargement 59 a plane is flying in a direction of 45 degrees and changes course in a clockwise direction to 135 degrees the angle through which the plane turns is so it should be so it's flying in a direction of 45 degrees which should be going in this direction and changes course in a clockwise direction to 135 degrees so this is 90 so it changes direction to right here which is 135 so it moves i'm going in this direction 
to this direction. So what you're looking at is the difference between 135 minus 45, which would equal to 90. And therefore it changes direction or the plane turns through a 90 degrees angle. And we are moving it nicely along. And 60 refers to the following diagram not drawn to scale. Which point shows that the angle of depression of a point X from Z is 30 degrees. So what we're looking at is, so what we know if is this is 30, this point right here is also 30 degrees. So what we can look at is if this point is 30 degrees, this is opposite the angle and this is adjacent. So we have opposite and adjacent, which should be tan. So we should say tan angle, which is tan 30 degrees is equal to yz opposite over the adjacent, which is 10. And if we're solving for yz, it will be 10 tan 30. And remember that tan angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. So our answer 460 is A. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us on this journey. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe so that we can all prepare for it.